Well, welcome everybody. It is Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. The only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MS, I'm your host, Jason Trayhorn, along with my co host, Cedric Swervin. Irvin. If you're going to be a Spartan Dog, be a Spartan Dog. That's right, baby. That's hey, right. Hey. <laughs> We got we got Brendan on here, but you know Brendan is going to come on the show a little later. So Brendan needs to go backstage right now. He's a secret weapon. We're going to talk about him and what he's going to bring to the table a little later on. He's a special guest. But if this is your first time joining the show, we want to thank you and welcome you. And if this is not your first time, we want to thank you for your loyalty because we wouldn't be here without you. There are a lot of big things happening, a lot of changes for the good, and it's all because of your loyalty to this is part of MSU. And it's always good to have my teammate on the phone. Man, come on, on this call here, Swerve. I mean, he has to break out of his shell, everyone. So please cheer him along so that he can, you know, get out of this shyness that is Cedric Swerve and Irvin. Let us know where you're watching from because I already see Bradenton's in the house for sure. And said, man, hey, welcome back, brother. Hey, man, I'm happy to be here. You know, what, what the people got to understand is for, for me to be back on this show, you know, my you were one of those guys up front that led the way for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you led the way for one of the best running backs in Michigan State all time. And I said right. one of the best centers of all time with the best running backs of all time. That's come on, dog. I said it. Y'all go tell Low White, all the Low White fans, all the other fans, tell him I said it. Right. We're gonna have to have him on here and have that debate. You know, Broward versus Dave, East Lansing, who wore it better, 33, 34, oh. all those things. <laughs> And who right. looked better? Who looked better even now? <laughs> come on, come on. Don't have, ladies, don't have the ladies bring that up <laughs> and see they have a judge and uh for that. But like look, West Loop of Chicago, what's happening? I saw Hawaii Woody Carr from Hawaii in the house. Aloha and hello. This spot is everywhere, baby. Spot is everywhere. I love it. I love we it. Deep. We are definitely deep. You know, in all seriousness, you know, we did talk about. You know, senior day being tomorrow from MSU basketball, and we talked about a special guest, one of the fire and ice. Unfortunately, it, Sean Resper will not be able to be with us on the show today because he did lose his father, Henry Marvin Resper, unfortunately. Uh, we want to pray for him and his family uh, as they uh, continue to, to, to mourn the loss of beloved Henry Resper, uh, who passed just recently, and they're dealing with family issues right now. So our hearts are heavy for the Respirate family. Um, and we will see him soon. He said that he, he'll be back as soon as he, you know, can, can. So. Yes, indeed. Praying for you, Sean. Absolutely. I've been down that road with my mom, man. So I know that feeling, brother. You and me both. It's, uh, that ain't easy. It ain't nothing easy about that. But let's get into some more brighter news. And MSU women's basketball, Swerve. Takes it out to Ross with a right wing three. Basketball puts a bow on the regular season, a five-game win streak. Michigan State beats the Badgers, 78 to 52. Yeah, five in a row, baby. Quick on the trigger in the back. That's all good. I like that. Look, look, man. They did it. They 78 to 52 on a road win in Wisconsin. 22 and 7 is what they finish overall. 12 and 6 in Big Ten play. Swerve, man. They got a double bye coming up in the Big Ten tournament. But now. you know what the problem is? If I'm 12 and 6 in conference and I'm 22 7 overall, that means outside my conference, all right, we get in the dance, we don't see nobody. We should have a shot. It's just, it's just the people that's in my conference. I can't get them off me. That's right. I mean, you know conference what I'm saying? is loaded. Conference is loaded. And what you got, Kaylee Clark. You know, you know, you got Caitlin Cole, you got Ohio State. I mean, there's some very good women's basketball teams in the Big Ten. That's sold out in Minneapolis. The men's tournament is not sold out yet, as of yet, from what I know. Right. Women's sold out in Minneapolis. So, um, look, there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of eyeballs watching the Spartans. It looks like they don't play until, for, like I said, the double by. I don't know if we have a bracket that we can pull up for anybody right now, but e either way, that's a huge accomplishment for Michigan State women's basketball. Uh, you know, this is the first time they've had more than 10 wins since 2015-16. Yeah, that's big. 
I ordered me a Julie jersey, man. You know, she's one of the best players on the team and in the conference. So, I mean, I'm for everybody, but I'm, I hope my jersey get here before the tournament. Nah, that's that's what you got to do. You got to support Spartans. got to support Spartans. Oh, well, all day. Much. All day. That's all we do around here. You better know it. <laughs> Speaking of supporting, I mean, look, number seven, 15 ranked nationally. MSU men's tennis did it again. Had another successful weekend at a highly competitive Diablo Collection tennis invitation over in Tempe, Arizona. That's where they had uh, they took, took down number fifty one Liberty and number twenty three Arizona before falling number seven. I'm sorry, Arizona State is who they beat, but they lost to number nine Arizona in the championship match on Sunday. See, my man, Oxen, y'all call him Oxen. I call him O. <laughs> and see, me, what well, well, going to take O over the over the hump, Straight, you listen to him, listen to him. Yeah. He don't do enough feet drills like I do. Like you I know? did. That's how I had, you know, that's how I got the name Swerver. So when I get with O in the summer, we, <laughs> we bringing the championship home because he just need a little bit more feet work from what I saw last week. Oh, okay. So, so he, you know, he was a Lansing, East Lansing local. So, you know, I know he said he goes home. And I think he lives off campus at home. You going to go by there and pick him up and do some right. out there? Because if I go to his house, I can get a free meal. Mm. I'm all about the free meal, straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can, That's matter of fact, we can, do, we can do the drills right in his front yard. I only need four cones. <laughs> and then we win in the national championship next season, baby. Four, four cones and a snapple. That's it. And a, and a red cup. Now, if he get the red cup, he ain't gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't gonna make <laughs> Men, men's tennis. Ozan Barris and company. Uh, they take on Cornell twelve at twelve noon this coming Sunday. That's gonna be another match. Let's see if they can. Get, let's see how high they get. You know, I, I think they're gonna be a top ten program before it's all said and done. They're hey, oh, I'm gonna be watching though. You know, everybody call you Ozone. I call you O. I'm going to be watching, baby. Let's do it. Big O. All right. Now, now we're going to go on to MSU Gymnastics. Let me see. Test your knowledge on this one. Sweet. No, no. Hold on, Sprague. You don't think I'll be on myself. Now, listen. listen everybody tune in and look at me. You know, look, look, really look at me. Mm -hmm. Gymnastics. You, I don't know if you, I know you know, but I'm going to let you know that I know that I know what you know and what everybody else know that following. Hey, we the Big Ten champs. Gymnastic, baby. But what but what people don't understand with that program in gymnastic, I have so much respect for all those women, young ladies that participate in that due to you know what happened a few years ago, whatever it is, and still to have the mindset and the drive and the desire and the determination to, to accomplish this because of whatever. To block it out and, and, and to win the Big Ten championship, to beat the Michigans of the world who had these girls, you know, hey, Swerving Urban, proud of you. <laughs> and he ain't alone. You know, they had a meet up on Saturday, I believe. That's what Harriet just put, gymnastics Saturday at Jenison. They did pick up their 13th win of the season over New Hampshire, scoring the fourth, fourth most points in program history. Harriet, did he? Look at Harriet. If anybody gonna know anything about Michigan State, uh, uh, what time they play, where they playing, what time they leaving, what time the airplane leave, is Miss Dean. And Miss Dean, when I come back, I need to get on that van, that that that, that bus too. It looks so good. Let me drive. <laughs> did you sign that? How many times? I'm not gonna ask you. Did you sign it? How many times did Swerve sign that plane? You that know that the plane? sad part about it. I haven't even signed it yet. And Miss Dean, on. and Miss Dean, my baby. That's my baby. <laughs> Miss Dean, your baby. That's my baby. Yeah. I'm definitely doing it this, this summer. <laughs> All right. You can. That's but now when you talk about Genesis Field, did they redo that building? No. Come on. Hey, now. it was old back when we was in school. Right? All the money that's on that camp. You saw the, the football building have been done twice. <laughs> they ain't do that building yet. And we and we big ten champs. We got a Imagine when we get a new building. Man, come on, man. <laughs> come on, dog. <laughs> they ain't did nothing to that building since we had to go. I had a class there. We had soccer inside of that. 
It's no way they, that building feel the same, brother. It's the same. They did a couple little rehabs to it. There's some rooms that they, re, you know, remodeled a little bit. No, but, I'm talking about knock it down. I mean, <laughs> you know what? All we need is Miss Dean to write a letter, and it's done. That's all we need. That's it. A letter from Miss Dean. <laughs> and it's done. <laughs> I, I Magic played over there. I know he want to see it go by now. I mean, he got a statue over in front of Breslin. I think he said it was old when it last time I seen him. He said, you know, Jack Jenison was old when we played over there. So anyway, hopefully, you know, somebody that has the money can can do something about that swerve, man. You're right about that. MSU baseball, they don't play in Jenison. They need a new field too. Nick Williams, Jr., outfielder, was Big Ten co-player of the week. Posted a 556 average hitting 10 to 18, averaging over 10 or two hits a game, man. I mean, he was balling. And hold along on. with uh, Ryan McKay, man, he was Big Ten freshman of the week. Oh, hold on. Keep that rack there straight. Now, look at this. Look at Ryan McKay, right? Look at yep. his body structure. And look at Nick. Nick, you look so good. We need you on the football field, brother. Look at Nick. Put that back Ooh, up. Whoa, look at that. Look. Okay, look at look. I'm, I'm going to show you. This is what I've been doing all, you know, the last six years of my life. Look at him, look at Ryan, which is a freshman. He was a freshman uh, of, the, of the week. You know, I was freshman of the year. You know, 19 touchdowns, th yeah, thousand yards in a row this so I keep on going. It ain't about me, though, Ryan. But Ryan, if you, Ryan, what you need to do is get in the weight room with Nick. Uh, Nick, ooh, I, I can see Nick outside linebacker. Oh, man. Oh, we need you, Nick. You look good, brother. You look good. Yeah, yeah. He looked like you run, too. I mean. He in the outfield straight. Yeah, you got to be able to run out see, there. Man, you ain't giving my credit. You ain't think I knew that. Come on, man. Hey, man, listen. Hey, <laughs> on, man. I, you, I won't say you never cease to amaze because I expect it, man. I've been around you all my life. I know. I know what you know. I know what hey, you're capable of. What Come the on. people don't understand, this is an interview for me again because I'm trying to get on full time. <laughs> so I had to do my homework, you know, because the people don't know. I know it ain't too many Spartan Dog football players know that Nick Williams is the outfielder. So he, McKay was the infielder. Right. You know, come on. They didn't know that, but I knew that, you know. <laughs> Man, you can't get nothing past Cedric Irvin. I'm gonna tell you that. Like he is watching all things Michigan State, no matter what city or state that he's in. We all locked in. Look. Please green, love green and white. <laughs> we gonna we're gonna test you on some more stuff. Now we're going to softball now, bro. Let's see what you know about softball. Before you live, live gray, right? Come on, everybody know live gray. <laughs> <laughs> how, how you don't know? see y'all call her live gray? I call her LG. <laughs> what LG do? Picture of the week. <laughs> there she go. There you go. Look at yeah. that wind up. See, that's the key. What a lot of people don't understand when you get the wind up back like she got it, and when she bring it through, she gonna bring the left leg through, and she gonna finish. And that's how we got the pitch of the week. My girl, LG. LG went 3-0, and posting a 0, 0.00 ERA with a .90 whip. I mean, man, I mean, she did it. She was she had a uh, no-hitter going in the top of the fifth inning against Yale before, uh, you know, they, they did the little cheap bunt, man. You know, I can't stand when you got a no-hitter and you do the bunt. That's a, That should be against the rules. No, but I blame the catcher. The catcher should have got the ball and hit the run in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, we know what you're trying to do. <laughs> you can't, that's a cheap way to break up a no-hitter, ain't it? Hey, right. Come on. Come oh, on, man. But that's the third Big Ten weekly honors that softball has gotten the most that they've received since 2008. So that's almost back in our territory now. That's a long no, time ago. No, 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 no. We're not 2000. Let's not go into 2000. <laughs> The nine nine to two thousand eight. I, I finished in ninety nine. I don't want nothing to do with from ninety nine on with football. Please, please. <laughs> you don't like the twenty tens. Nah, I All of us. Fourteen, fifteen. All of us, all brother. <laughs> it's a different game. You know what? We should have some. And I ain't so much talking about the player, but since we are Spartan dogs, I want to can we have Spartan dogs and Spartan pups. Well, who's the pups, man? Who's the pup? Anybody that was born in 1990. Oh. <laughs> Anybody? You said the NFL Combine this past weekend. You saying the boys were soft? Hey, listen, listen, listen. First of all, first of all, I don't think it was 40 yards. 
It's impossible. You got that many four, four, sevens. Come on, straight. Everybody was under four, four. Yeah, come on. Linebackers running four, four, seven. Deep. Ham, and cheese, ham and cheese sandwich is the same ham and cheese sandwich we had before. McDonald's the same McDonald's. Come on, man. <laughs> Oof, and, and how I know about the 40 was my status was, was predicated on the 40. Yeah. So you mean to tell me all the and, and what was this 447 when I'm watching football on Saturday? <laughs> There's a difference. But we're gonna talk about that. Like the game speed versus that that I don't know, Lucas Oil speed. Cause I sometimes they, they run in four threes on the on the in the combine, but I ain't seeing four eight on the field. And then you see it in inverse too. You see guys that run slow times that are pretty doggone fast on the field. So, I mean, that swear that was you, wasn't it? I definitely agree with it because for one, I'm not a track, I'm not a track runner. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I, I, my, and my football stands, I don't get down on my knee, put one leg back, and get all in that. That's not <laughs> football. But turn on the tape, you will see that if I stay another year, this is about me. I, I, be, I break all the records. I have all the time. You ain't talking about me. Oh, you just talking about in general. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I thought you were talking about me. It's, it's okay. It's right. okay. It's okay. I ain't telling okay. them to retire my jersey. That's, it ain't about me. Right? We don't, no, we, we don't no. have to get the jersey retired. We lobby for that. Yeah, yeah, but I, I really want to – I want us to have a sparring Dog, dog yeah. meeting. I want us to have a sparring dog meeting. I want to say we got sparring dog and then we got sparring pups. No. You got to have some big brothers, little brothers. You know what I mean? Like, so Trevor, Trevor in the chat said you ran a 4-6-1. Is that true? Is that an accurate time? Who ran a 4-6-1? That's what Trevor in the chat says that said ran a 4-6-1. Is that true, Trevor? Where'd you get tell, that? Tell Trevor to put his address wherever he live at. I'm going to get out. <laughs> Trevor, I ran a four five seven. <laughs> don't cheat me, Trevor. Point oh four. Don't don't take that point oh four away from said now. Right, please, not me. Don't do that. Come on. He said hard to get outside for the Lions. Should have stayed at MSU. Oh man, he 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 laughing, but he's. <laughs> Yes, brother. <laughs> Trevor, come for, how you come for said Trevor? Come on, oh. man. Damn. That's now, I, don't, crazy. I don't know if Trevor saw Cat Williams and and Shake and all them. Oh no, no, not Cat Williams. What's the other guy? Mike Evans and they had to, come on, come on, Trevor. I pull up <laughs> on site. All right. right. He said he loves said. All it's right. It's always said, love. That's my man. Yeah, buddy. Hey, man. <laughs> Guys, look, I like this. This is a good time to talk about it, man. Look, charitable gift, America, everybody. You know, make your NIL charitable. If you're going to give a donation, make it charitable. This is Sparta MSU. You know, we love Charitable Gift America because, you know what? This is your chance to take control of your NIL contributions. Direct them to Spartan athletic programs of your choice. The This is Sparta Fund, powered by Charitable Gift America. We're going to put the, the, the logo up here in a minute. It allows you to choose which sport you want to support with your NIL donations. All donations to the fund are tax deductible. All CGA athletes donate 5% of their contract to the charitable organization of their choice. We've had tennis players, gymnastics, people, all kinds of athletes on here that were telling their stories about this. It's a wonderful thing. Make a difference. It makes a difference for Spartan teams and also makes a difference in the world. The This is Sparta NIL Fund. It's home for Spartan fans looking to impact their teams together for senior fans, those that are over 75, the young ones. Find out how contributions can deliver Spartan Fund points at cgaathletics.org. Man, I'll tell you what, Swerve. You, people, you like what you heard so far? This is just the beginning right now. We're just getting started. We're getting warmed up. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons on the YouTube or wherever you're watching this at. We love that. Please don't forget to subscribe to the shows and follow us on all of our social media platforms at This Is Sparta MSU. We'll be back in a moment with our special guest, along with more swerve, after these messages from our friends over at IHOP. Oh. IHOP has tons of omelets. 
so you can have omelets for breakfast, brunch, brinner, or even a brittle of the night snack. Try the new meaty, cheesy, and crispy mega omelet and add cinnamon dippers for a dollar. Only at IHOP. Well, we back. We back. And listen, Swerve, without further ado, we're going to bring on the old man that was on earlier. You know, I know he may look like He's younger than us, but he's older than everybody in the chat and everything. He's, he's, well, hold on, when you before y'all look, he look like that. Duke. You remember Dookie Hazard? Dookie Hazard. <laughs> Dookie Hazard. <laughs> Brendan Moore, Martin's Illustrated Rivals. He joins MSU. Well, this was part of MSU to talk MSU football, hockey, all kinds of stuff because he is an expert at it. Welcome to the show, Brendan. How are you? I'm doing good, guys. And I know we're talking off air that we're going to test set and his uh, and his knowledge of some of these MSU sports. I'd say he passed with flying colors. I think he deserves a full time gig. I don't know, guys. Come on, BMO. That, that, I got that's his, back. Right I got with his me. back. Everybody else call you Brandon Moore. You BMO to me. <laughs> it's like Lil G, LG. See, I got. Come on, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh man, listen, Brendan. You've been covering Michigan State Athletics, I know, you know, for a while now. You've been working with rivals and uh, Spartan Sports Illustrated, I guess, for the last two years. Is that right? Yeah, for about two years. Two years. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about MSU hockey because you do cover a lot of the teams. But let's get into that right now. MSU hockey right now, Big Ten champions in the regular season by beating, defeating Wisconsin. Let's go, baby. Some cheering right there. Look, it's their first ever Big Ten regular season title. So talk to yeah. us a little bit about that this season that MSU Hockey put up, Brendan. Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with the head coach, Adam Nightingale's done a tremendous job kind of reinvigorating that some of that energy that that MSU, let's be honest, they were a blue blood in, in hockey at one point back 2007, won a national title, and Nightingale comes in after about a decade of just not so good hockey and then comes in do have a solid season last year, big 10 championship this year. And they did it in a road venue against the second place team in the big 10. So not in, they 100% earned it. Uh, I mean, you play each team four times in the big 10, there's seven big 10 hockey teams. So Michigan state 100% earned this. And uh, Trey Augustine was an absolute stud this week. And he had 44 saves on Friday night to lead Michigan State to that 5-2 win to secure the Big Ten Championship. You know Trey. what, uh, Be more uh, Trey, I inboxed him last week, and I gave him a motivation to speak it. You know, I think that really helped lead into the championship. But now, can you go back to reinvigorating? What I just, I, that's out my vocabulary. I would just wanted you to <laughs> break it down in little terms of people who went around the class and not in the class. Reiterating? <laughs> Yeah, I can, you know, what's the other word? Because some of my ex-teammates watching, I know they didn't understand that. Like, Plastico Birds would have never understood. We, and ben, my team probably would have now because he, he he's speaking more. But I, I, I had class with him. He wouldn't have understood that word. Robert Smith wouldn't have understood it. I can keep going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, how's re-energized for you? Or maybe an right. influx of talent. Just the way he's recruited uh especially in the transfer portal. I know Reed Lebster, who had a big weekend. He was a transfer portal guy, brought him back to his home state, and Lebster had a big weekend, uh, had a big season to lead Michigan State to this Big Ten title. So Nightingale's work he's done in the transfer portal, getting a lot of talent on campus back in this hockey program, I think he's done a tremendous job. And you guys talked about a lot of the other sports, and that there's some great coaches, and I think Alan Haller's done a tremendous job hiring uh, a lot of these coaches. I mean – uh, women's basketball has having a really good season with the first year head coach and Nightingale's killing it with the hockey team. Well, that's a good point. You know, Reed left. So I think he was a UMass transfer, correct? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, I think out of the Clarkson area, he was committed to Michigan state under Anastas. And then, you know, the coaching change happened. Then he went out to UMass, had a lot of success out there, then was able to come back home 
uh, to, to Michigan. So I was able to meet his parents a couple of weeks ago. Great kid, great family. And that's a great team all the way around. When you look at what, you know, Nightingale has been able to accomplish in such a short time, you know, and, and let's not remember, let's not forget, you know, these guys nowadays said they can get paid too. You know, everybody talks about NIL and they always think about football players driving Lamborghinis and all that stuff and basketball and all hockey players. We get, they, they get in there now. I mean, in that, 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 what does that make you feel like say thinking about what you would have been like as an NIL recipient back in the nineties? First of all, be more. Thank you for using small words. I, I, I was able to understand everything you said. You probably helped a lot of sparring dolls out too. So, uh, but uh, the NIL, come on, man. I, I and I was just telling my son, like, and, and we had the heart, the heart. And I say, son, do you really care about me? Do you really love me? He's like, what you mean, Dad? I say, uh, it's a kid that just gave his mama a house, and he hasn't played a down yet. He ain't even put on a helmet and a shoulder pads yet. So I said, what's your motivation? If you like me a little bit, can you please continue to work hard and make plays and do something for your daddy? I you ain't got to do nothing for your mama, but do something for me. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I got I'm going to keep it real. I don't care nothing about your mom, your, your other brothers, your, your best friend, your daddy. <laughs> I want them to take a picture of you hugging me and giving me a key to sell. Please, I need it. It's ridiculous, man. I mean, you got guys driving three hundred thousand dollar cars, and I mean, that's crazy. I mean, take this home, brother. Investment. They need to do something with it, man. Not, let's not drive cars like that. That's crazy, you know. But like, I, look, I know everybody wants to talk about this. This is a big week, you know. You have Senior Day coming up tomorrow, Brendan. MSU men's basketball. You know, they did have a – they gave the Boilermakers all they could handle this weekend down in West Lafayette, Indiana, and had a hard-fought loss, losing 80-74 to 74 to the Boilermakers. Tyson Walker chips in 14 with seven boards, and Jay Nakins had 13 points on the day, but just not enough to beat the Boilermakers. Yeah, I mean, you said it best. It was a hard-fought game down in West Lafayette, and that's a place where Michigan State has not won in a while. And, I mean, you're going up against – probably the national player of the year in Zach Eady, who's been given every single team in the country troubles. Whenever anyone runs into Purdue, Zach Eady scoring, you know, 20 points, grabbing 15 boards a game. So he's, he's a ridiculous talent. And Purdue did a great job at, at, uh, at shooting the, shooting the perimeter shot three ball. Uh, so Michigan state, I thought they fought hard. Energy was really good. Um, uh, it was one of the better games. I thought that they played and it was unfortunate that they couldn't come out with the win. Uh, however, I do think they have a little bit of momentum heading into this senior night against a Northwestern team that they struggled against when they played them the first time around uh, at Northwestern. So looking to kind of get revenge on the Wildcats and Boo Booey uh, is a player that's given Spartans nightmares for the past couple of years. So I'm looking forward to senior night. I'll be I'll be there covering uh, covering it for Spartans Illustrated. So you're going to be there at the Brazil Center tomorrow night? Yeah, I will be. Yep. We, let's look at that senior. We had it. We had a little graphic that came up there with the seniors. Can we pull that back up, guys? Thank you, seniors. I mean, that's we got a lot of them. I mean, you got Smith on there. I see Sissoko. You got obviously Walker, Malik. You know, you, you know. And look, man, we can't forget. Oh, Izzo over there, man. I mean, look, that's that. They did a couple of nice articles on him. I've been watching that. You know, uh, that that's that's got to be an emotional moment for. Coach Izzo, will he walk him out? Will he get flowers for it with his son? That's gonna be that's gonna be a great scene. Listen, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not a, sure. I'm gonna be there in spirit, right? Mm -hmm. But I was gonna say when 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 Lil Izzo walked through, you know, I, I may shed a few tears because you know it's, it's, it's almost like the Rudy story. You know what I mean? When he hit the three, his dad there. You know, Izzo. I mean, that's my guy, and. uh yeah, I think I'm gonna record myself crying, man, and send it on, you know, to to the website. You know, we gotta have that. Put it in your store. Just, just have a moment, man. You know what I mean? But I want to ask Izzo, do he feel like me with the NIL? Well, his son is on his way out. But I'm serious, man. I hope my son can give me some keys to something. If not, it mess up our relationship. I'm telling you. <laughs> you can't fall out over the NIL with your son. That's one thing we 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 strictly prohibit parents falling out with their kids over NIL deals. But look, 
Speaking of Northwestern, you know, Brendan, you brought up you're going to be covering that game. But there, there's a couple of players out for Northwestern, according to uh, stats and info behind the scenes that say that, you know, there are three players out when the Spartans will be playing on senior night. It could help our guys get back on track. Ty Berry, Ryan Lingborg, and Matt Nicholson all out. Yeah, so this is going to be a little bit of a depleted Northwestern team. I do think Michigan State still needs to be on their A game because who Northwestern does have playing is Boo Booey, who's given Michigan State troubles the past couple of meetings. So, yeah, I do think Michigan State has a good shot at winning with some of these guys out, but it's still I think it's going to be a battle. And, uh, said you're not going to be the only one crying because we talked to uh, Stephen Izzo, the media, uh, after basketball practice yesterday. He said he's going to shed some tears tomorrow night. So hey, hey, did you see the guy that just texted and said it? Bowie hit Bowie's seventeenth year. It, it sure seems like his seventeenth year. <laughs> Look. Yeah. The last time that we'll see him, huh? I mean, yeah, the oh. Avenger. <laughs> I like that good rapper name, Lil Izzo. Oh Lil yeah. Lil, no, no, no. Lil Iz. Don't can't say Izzo. Little Izz. That be Little Izz. You know what I mean? Like Little Bow Wow, you can't say Bow Wow no more. You got to say Bow Wow. But we're going to call Little Izz though Little Izz. Little Izz. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. I like that, man. You know, so look, we, we got to talk a little bit. We're going we gonna to shift the focus. Obviously, we hope that this, this turns out well for the Spartans. We need to see where they're going to end up with the seating for the big dance and all that. We're going to continue to cover that in days to come. But MSU football, you know, let's talk a little bit about what you saw over the weekend. The NFL Combine, we talked about that. Four, five, seven, slash six, one, according to uh, some people, Trevor, in the chat. Um, he was at the Combine, he ran. But Nick Samak was Michigan State's only, only NBA, player. The only player that got invited to the Combine. The other time that there was only one player in the last, like, 10 years, it was a center as well, Brian Allen. How about that? Them centers. Nick Saban, but he wasn't able to perform any do any any of the drills because he had a you know he was recovering from a broken leg that he received in the week eleven said at Indiana. Can you believe that? Man, that's 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 sad, man. That's. But I, I would well he was he was hurt. He, he was. I was gonna ask him how did he get to the combine? But just one person, you know. Did you did you drive yourself? <laughs> <laughs> How to get there? <laughs> you know, usually, usually you you get with your guys. You coming from workout? We all fly up together, but it's just me by myself. And I'm from East Lansing. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and drive. I'll just get there when I get there. You know, what I'm <laughs> I, that's me. That's you don't me. know who his agent is. I don't know who his agent is. He might have flew out there with the group. You never know. But that's I mean, he, that's he, he's a good player. He's a good player. He is a good player. Nick right, damn good player, Stray. And, and be more, that's be value to what we got to build this program up to be to get our players on that stage, man. That's you right. Yeah, and I, well, one thing I want to add about Samek is MSU is going to have a pro day next week, I believe. So we'll see. I'm not sure if he's going to be 100% healthy or not, but we'll see if he participates in that. And I'm sure we'll see some other guys uh, do NFL combine like drills in that pro day. Okay. Are you going to be able to cover that? They're going to let they going to open it up to the media. They do open it up to the media, luckily. So I will be there. Okay, we need oh. some of that video, right? Because I was going to say, if you had any problems, give me a call. <laughs> you got the hotline to Coach Smith. Hey, hey, don't answer the phone on the third call. It's the third <laughs> ring, and see what happens. I need my boy Bmo in there for next the week after, so we can put it, put it on here. Right. Be more need to be. You got it. You got it. Be more. All right. Be more. Speaking of that, you were at an event yesterday. I think it was after Tom Izzo's weekly press conference from you know, talking about the Purdue game and at the Breslin Center. And after that, they had a couple of coordinators, offensive, defensive coordinator for Michigan State football came out to do a little roundtable discussion. So you were able to sit in on a couple of these discussions. I know you have. Um, those conversations on YouTube that you can talk about a little bit, but MSU football defensive coordinator, Joe Rossi, talk about what you heard from him and what his, the outlook for Michigan state defensively is. Yeah. Like you said, Jason, our, these full round table sessions, they're on our YouTube channel, uh, Spartans illustrated. So after we're done here, then you can, guys can check that out. But yeah, I was impressed with Rossi. I think, uh, 
he's focusing a lot on the development part of, of, of just player development overall. And he thinks it's kind of a lost art in today's college football. So I like that aspect of him uh, and his defense. He's, it's going to be a flexible defense. It's going to match the personnel strengths. I mean, when you look at what he did at Minnesota, it was kind of like a base four, three, four, two, five type scheme. Uh, but he had a hybrid edge guy, a hybrid end. So it, he can give him a three down, three down lineman look at times, sometimes a four down lineman look. So I do think he's willing to adapt to what he's got. And right, right now he's still in the process of, of meeting the guys, learning their strengths, learning their weaknesses. But I'm confident just listening to him and what he had to say that uh, this defense is going to, is going to play to its strengths. And then three things he really focused on that he put a big emphasis on was we got and Michigan state's got to be able to stop the run. That's number one eliminate explosive plays and create takeaways and to kind of expand on that create takeaways thing. Uh, he had kind of added that the zone defense kind of creates more interceptions than man to man, uh, in the secondary there and then active hands uh, in the front seven can kind of create those fumbles. So I think you'll see this team play, uh, mostly zone defense and have active hands there. So, uh, I was impressed with Joe Rossi overall. Obviously he has experience coming from Minnesota coached at Rutgers. So he has experience, uh, in the area of recruiting. So he knows kind of those talent hotbeds. He's recruited the state of Michigan before. So I was impressed with what Rossi had to say. Hmm. So, so Ross is going to be doing his own defense, not going to be doing that old, uh, you know, Narduzzi man to man, just get in your face and come after you type of defense. So, so sounds like blitzing will kind of be at a premium. It's not going to be one of those things that we're going to be getting out the quarterbacks left and right as an offensive player said, you know, a guy who's in the backfield that ran routes, you know, from time to time, you know, you look, you look flares and, you know, your wheel routes. What what do you rather face? Like, do you, do you like the man to man? Would you rather be with man against a man to man defense or the zone? Well, you, you, you want man to man if you if you have a, a six six Plessico Burris on the outside. You know, you want man to man when you got that slot receiver in the inside. And then you want man to man if I'm gonna spread you out and I got a running back in the back like Cedric Gervin that can get me four yards and, 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 and some more. So if you do that, I can spread you out off, off, offensively. All right, that's why I speak listening to be more. If you listen to be more, you like okay, we got a chance. But then you, when you face reality, you got to have the Jimmys and the Joes to play that zone defense and, and it cause havoc. And then when you don't have the Jimmys and the Joe, you better apply pressure. I want to. I either want to put one more in the box than you have, or I want to put one back to cover somebody that we may be lacking in the coverage, or I want to send one more than you have to put pressure on you, but we don't have to cover so long in the in the, in, in the back end. You know what I mean? And then from an offense standpoint, I'm just waiting to see how spring go. I want to see what's going to be the identity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because right now, like I say, that we don't have the names yet, in my opinion. And we can go down the line over the years. And when I say names, and you can name some names that you knew those guys were going to make plays. You know what I mean? I still can remember when, when Walker played against Miami. If you don't have Walker, we don't beat Miami. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. unless, unless you got Swerve and Urban. You know, that's the only other thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you talking about Kenny Walker? The third? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. and I always said it about. I was about the same speed. Yeah, yeah, I was a little better. But listen, um. <laughs> <laughs> hey. so that, that's the key too, but it's good schemes. You can have good schemes all you want, but like I said, I, like what Bimo said, he, he you got to put the scheme to the players that you have. Right. You can't run a man to man defense. I'm gonna have man to man corners. Yeah. When you we talk about Jimmys and Joes, we got a Jimmy and Joe. We got a J J Jordan Hall. We got one of them that plays linebacker. You know. Right. Uh, yeah, there is Jordan Hall makes plays. Mama Hall is in the chat. She said she agree with you, man to man. That's what she right. talking about. She right. wants that. If mama say man to man, hey coach, play man to man. You got right. you got you got. Well, I'm trying to say rat now. R A T now. Not right now. Rat now. <laughs> and you don't take hold off the field. He got to play all three phases. We gonna win. <laughs> Tell right. mama I said that. Don't take him off the field. And make, <laughs> and make sure you feed him some collard greens when he come home. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, nah. Brendan, you, you, Brenda, you eat collard greens? No, he, he called them no. broccoli. <laughs> Spinach. Broccoli's Spinach. good stuff. Broccoli's good stuff. I, I enjoy yeah. broccoli. 
I ain't like collard green with some hot sauce, Bimo. I, I got you next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> the wet me up song. You gonna have a, a, a said over cook off, you know, yeah, little collard greens, you know. Little, well, we'll have a fun tailgate week one, week one, week I one. They no more. I got you. <laughs> Say less. We got them on defense. Oh, they got them on a defensive diet. Okay, linebacker diet. Okay, hey, I don't, hey, mama, I don't, I don't know about the diet. I don't know nothing about all that. That's why they, why they, what's he what's he weighing? I don't know. Jordan looked good when I seen him walking around. They had him on the video with no shirt on. He was good. Miss Ho, listen to me. Listen to me. If you don't listen to nothing else, we don't care what they got him on. When he come home, we know what we got to feed him. Mm -hmm. And we need him on. The, we need him to play linebacker. We need him to kick the ball. We need him to play fullback. We need collard greens and neck bone. <laughs> <laughs> tell him I said that. They just got here. How they gonna tell him what you can't feed them? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's what you. That's what I like to hear, man. See, that's what a real running back talks about. What you want to eat? Like MSU football offensive coordinator Brendan. Like you talk about Brian Lindgren. Okay, he came in town. You had to. You had a chance to catch up with him at the round table with the media as well. What did you hear from the offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach? Yeah, he came in in a super tough situation. He told a funny story that when he first day on the job, got off the plane, his wife called him, and she's like, oh, great first day on the job. You got no scholarship quarterbacks on the roster because the other three entered the portal, committed to other schools. So he really started from ground zero just at that quarterback's position. And, I mean, Jason, like you said, he's the offensive coordinator. He's also the quarterback's coach. So he brought in Aiden Childs, who I'm sure everyone's familiar with. Uh, the episode you had with him was great. Uh, so, so Childs is in, uh, but once they brought in Childs, it was kind of tough to get another transfer quarterback for Lindgren. And he talked about this because when you bring in a guy that you recruited, that, that, that you developed for a year that played in, you know, a handful of games in year one as a true freshman, it's hard to, to kind of tell that to another transfer portal quarterback, quarterback and be like, Hey, you know, there's, it's just hard to recruit then in the transfer portal there, but they got it done uh, by getting Tommy Schuster from North Dakota, who is North Dakota's all-time leading passer. Uh, so I think Linger did a great job with that, getting two transfer portal guys, Childs and Schuster over, also got two high school guys. So I think that quarterback position uh, was kind of the toughest job for Linger over, over these past couple of months. But overall, kind of my takeaways and what he said is, it's kind of similar to Rossi, is he's going to match the offense to kind of the personnel he's got. He's going to play to the strengths. Uh, he's going to be flexible with the offense. Uh, and at Oregon State, he used the tight ends a lot, and he's bringing over his tight end from Oregon State, Jack Velling. So I think uh, you'll see Velling being showcased a lot in this offense. And he described the offense as kind of a modern pro-style uh, type offense. Uh, he studies Shanahan, studies uh, the Lions, Shanahan with the 49ers, obviously. So uh, he looks at a lot of those top offenses in the NFL and wants to implement some of that stuff uh, here with Michigan State. And as far as kind of what attracted him to the Michigan State job, uh, it's it was the ability to work under Smith yet again. So, he, I mean, he spoke very highly of Smith and that balance Smith has of, of, of the work and the personal life. Like, hey, we're going to work really hard. We're going to put out the best product we can. But at the same time, uh, we want to be good family men, too. We want to be spend time with our family. Uh, live a good life as well outside of football. So that's also kind of what led Lingren to key to, to to kind of stay under Smith and follow him all the way across the country from Corvallis, Oregon, uh, here to East Lansing, Michigan. So overall, I was impressed with both coordinators. I thought they both had a lot of good things to say. Hey, B. Moore, I would have left too with the pay raise. You didn't put that in there neither. That that helps. <laughs> that does help. That does help. And, and he and and uh, going back to Rossi a little bit, he talked about. Just being, I mean, Lindgren touched on this as well, but just being at a Big Ten school is huge as well. I know Rossi was coming over from Minnesota to Michigan State, but he also talked about Michigan State's recent appearance in the college football playoff um, about nine years ago, I believe it was. So uh, he touched on that, and then he thinks this, uh, this team, this program, has the ability to get back to that level, and that's kind of what was appealing to him. So pay as well, obviously, could have been a big factor. And, yeah, I, overall, I do like these hires. You, know, you brought up something. You said, you know, it was it was rough for Brian Lindgren. His his wife, his wife even said, like, he came, showed up, and all the quarterbacks left. So you talk about Noah Kim, Sam Levitt, 
and Caden Hauser, right? You all all three of those yep. guys, boom, hit the portal. It took off as soon as the uh the, the coach was named, Jonathan Smith. And you know, I do you think said that you know when you hire when not you hire, when you recruit a kid out of the portal and Aiden Childs, it's not just the fact that you recruited this kid and he came from Oregon State, it's the fact that he's he's still a young player. And you know how it is, like I do. You know, there's there's football parents and then there's quarterback parents, right? It's a whole different family. I'm not going to call them parents. Families. There's only one quarterback that can play on the field at a time. You know, there's all there's dual court running backs. There's all kind of linemen, all kind of receivers, but one quarterback. Does that make it tough to go recruit guys when you have a young player like Aiden Childs that you just – he brought over from Oregon State. It, it make it hard now because you got to look at the transfer portal. You know, it, it, it's just like uh, it was one of those uh, football players. That, what's the guy named from um, played at LSU? The honey, the Badger. Oh, Honey Badger. Yeah. He said I sat behind you know two guys and waited my turn. You know what I mean? But now you oh, get that's... guys that you know I'm a freshman. I mean, look at the guy that's at Texas now, right? He leave his senior year. He goes to Ohio State. You know, gets a million dollars or whatever he's supposed to get. Doesn't play at Ohio State, right? Yeah. They, they get the top quarterback that comes in. He see the writing on the wall. He leaves Ohio State. He goes to Texas, right? Look at Alabama this year. You got a number one quarterback in the country, right? Save his lead, right? He leaves. He left with Ohio Number State. one high school quarterback, right? Like you say, family dad. He's the best nigga. He's the next Tom Brady. He leaves. He goes to somewhere. So it's like... I'll stay. Yeah. But now the good thing for this coordinator is this is a guy that knows the offense. This is the guy that you can count on. This is a guy that you can say, hey, let's go out there and be the coach on the field. You know what I mean? In that, in that standpoint. But re recruiting a high school kid, if I was recruiting a high school kid, I would be straight up with him. I will let him know what's, what's his time, what's his chance, what's his opportunity. Now, before you put pen to paper, understand this, right? If you don't do that, which, you know, even if you do that, people can still make up their mind to leave. But at the end of the day, yeah, it's hard now with the transfer port of guys being loyal. loyal. And, I, and I'm 50-50 on it because coach is not loyal. They can leave for a better job and more money as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. You know, Brendan, I mean, you've heard uh, Baker, the new president of the NCAA, kind of about face and his stance on the transfer portal because there was a lot of talk of, trying to put some guardrails around it and not allow players to move as freely from school to school. But Charlie Baker now says, well, when I talk to athletes, what the athletes say to me is, how, how are you going to put guardrails on me when my coaches, the coaches that we see walking out on contracts left and right for better opportunities, why can't we? Yeah, I mean, it's 100% a fair argument. And I do think it's good for the kids just to have that ability because uh, not everyone develops the same. Not everyone uh, learns the same under the same coaching staff. Like not one coaching staff, it's not one size fits all. So I do think it's good to a certain degree for uh, for these athletes to go and explore their options. If, if they don't like the place they start in, that they can go out and be successful at a different place. Like look at a guy like Joe Burrow, who didn't play much at Ohio State, went to LSU, won the Heisman Trophy, won the national championship. Uh, Ke Kenneth Walker is another guy, ex benefited a lot from the transfer portal. Wake Forest was kind of back up a little bit, uh, comes to Michigan State and was a stud. Doak Walker, award winner, now having huge success in the NFL. So I do think there's aspects of the transfer portal that are good, but I do think it's also created somewhat of a negative uh, kind of a not so beneficial mindset. Cause at what point does it stop? At what point do you say, okay, I'm going to stick this out and fight through this. I'm going to, I'm going to stick it out and try to try my best to win the job instead of, you know, if I don't win the job, then I'm just going to go elsewhere and where I can, where I can win the job. So at what point, to what extent does it stop? That's, that's where I think the gray area is. So it's an interesting debate. Really is, and the debate will continue on. You know, Michigan State football starts their spring drills on March 19th. That's coming up in a few weeks from now and culminating with the spring showcase, they want to call it. It's not a game necessarily because uh, they need the bodies, right? On April 
20th, that's the week of the NFL draft. So that, that's something. Hey, say maybe we could do something like that. Come up for the spring game and then go to the NFL draft in Detroit a couple of days from then and see some people. I'm going to book my ticket right now as we speak. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Brendan, got to get some video of that, that pro day. But, man, thank you for coming Brendan, on the show. Brendan, before you leave, do you have any mileage I can use so I can, you can go down on the court? Because I, I... – <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have that. no Southwest miles. And no, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> no miles in it. You don't have any credits at Rick's either, down in the basement or any of that stuff. <laughs> oh, Bebo, you you no good after this, this podcast. <laughs> we need no. to go to Rick's when I get up there, brother. <laughs> hey, I'll be 21 in September. Okay, coming up. Football yeah. season, man. Football season. Here we go. 21 on ID, but you look 12. <laughs> hey, we can't wait to card me. I dare you to card me. No, hey, hey, man, ID is the one that matters. Yes. Appreciate the time, Brendan. Thank you for joining us here at the Sparta MSU. Brendan Moore, everybody from Spartans Illustrated. Have a good time, man. We'll see you soon. Yep. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys for, uh, for having me on. Absolutely. My man. <laughs> Swerve. Hey man, I'm I'm thoroughly impressed with your knowledge of all things from gymnastics, softball, baseball. I mean tennis. You're, you're training Ozon Bears. You're gonna be at his house. I call him O. I call him O. Yeah. Oh, and train him at his house. You know, uh, Julie. I call her Jay. You know, so I, I'm on top of all these players, man. Trey from South. I got live. You know, come on, guys. LG. Yeah, LG. You know what I mean. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Hey, we got to do this again. Hey, I, I'm a, I'm a text away. <laughs> hey, I but I appreciate it. you, man. I love what you've been doing. I've been following this for a minute, and it's a great thing to have, man. Especially when guys get to come back on and have opportunity to talk MSU, man. Because you got some guys that 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 really bleed it. You know yeah, what I mean, and, and and wish that they could have more of a voice. So for, for me, man, it's an outlet. You know, I'm always wearing my green, but I had a chance to put it on today again. Uh, I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely, man. This ain't the last time, and you know we're gonna continue this. Man. We gotta bring some more dogs on. We gonna, you know, you brought up one that, that that's really getting me going. I'm thinking about that oh, Billy Green, that Billy and Scotty Green. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, we, just man, had, we, we, just, we just had three three texts or three. Text in and they spell said with a C. No, I believe Miss Dean did it and then Steve did it again. Harry, oh, no. said with an S. 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 Oh, Miss Dean, you out of all people. God damn, S, not C. Now, not Raven, S. do it again. Raven say come back next Thursday, but he put a C on there. <laughs> Trevor's one. Said a smart dude and a teddy bear. We'll call him Seti Bear. Teddy Bear. He can hang out with Lil Is. Seti Bear. Man, tre hey, oh, man. Hey Trev, I'm gonna find you, brother. I'm gonna find you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Said, Here we go, Ray. I appreciate you. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, with an ass. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, I know it's an ass. Damn it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, they apologize, man. You know, we're all human. We make mistakes uh, all the time. And I love them all, man. Trust me. I have a good time. These <laughs> 54 minutes and 24 seconds of count was great in my life. I appreciate it. 100%, man. This ain't the last, like I said to you, man. So, look, we're going to wrap it up here. For Cedric Irvin, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Everybody have a good night. God bless you. Barndara. Go green. Go white.